Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are welcome you all to the show. Hey, waiting on the verdict in the Derek uh, Chauvin, soon to be conviction, I believe, with the, all the evidence that's against him. Some of the defense witnesses statements were unbelievable but some say okay well hey they're doing their job but it goes to show you that someone can change the narrative and the thoughts of people's minds who had their mind made up but then it's that question of doubt see the question of doubt is what's on the table. Can I convince one of these jurors that Derek Chauvin was actually trying to help George Floyd and that George Floyd was actually trying to kick and assault police officers while they had him pinned down? Are these jurors, or can one of them be so dumb not to recognize a person Uh, trying to get comfortable that's in pain, that's trying to breathe, that's trying to stretch their legs and mistake that for uh, an assault when he's handcuffed on his side with a knee in his neck, but yet he has this somehow superhuman strength to where you can have three men on him, uh, one with his knee in his neck choking him to death, And he's still that strong to where he's a threat and he can use the power in his leg muscle to kick them all across the street. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. When Malcolm said the chickens are coming home to roost, what that means in today's time is all the negative stereotypes All the racism, all the systemic racism is coming home to bite the racist in their ass. We're watching it play out on live television. The revolution is being televised, and we're looking at it right now. I'm sorry. It's being televised. It's right in your face. It's been televised, and it's also on the Internet. The revolution is on the Internet, and it's being televised. Because after this, this will shape the whole dynamic of police force in America. Now, God forbid that they find Derek Chauvin uh, not guilty or he have a mistrial and he gets off. I believe police officers will join on with the protesters and protest their own police department. Because none of the police officers came to aid Derek Chauvin. Matter of fact, they were testifying against him like, no, nah, this is not what is taught. This is not procedure. Actually, this was just cold-blooded murder, and it was ridiculous. I believe the police officers they will join in with the protesters against the police department. But really, it won't be against the police department. It'll be against bigotry, hatred, and white supremacy. White supremacy and white privilege is killing America. At the extent that all other minorities, what they call minorities, whether you black, brown, Asian, Native American, whatnot, your tax dollars go to fund white supremacy. And people are getting fed up. It's like, man, I'm being played like I'm an idiot, right? But the illusion, I mean, the masters of illusion, you know, I mean, it even had... That white privilege and that whiteness had people so confused to where at one point they were actually buying bleach and cream to fit in. I mean, they were so sick with it to where they were harming themselves 
to fit into something that they could never be. Now, what what would make a person do that? Right. Let me show you the the, the mind game. Right. We we'll start off with the Asians. Right. I remember those cartoons back in the day where they was calling them Jap and Gooks and Slant Eyes and Yellow Dogs and all that. They was calling the Asian people, right? And I'm talking about the white supremacists. They ridiculed them and demeaned them so bad to where it made Asians hate being Asians and they tried to do their best to assimilate to be white. Even Asians bleaching cream, was having surgeries to fix their eyes because the ridicule was so bad it made them feel uh, a hatred, self-hate. They were hating themselves, right? Then the same thing to black people all over the globe. All the name calling the nigger, spook, shine, ham bone, cornbread, all the negative collard green, all the negative stereotypes that they put on black people, uh, Bojangle, Sambo, all of that some made some black folks hate themselves from that negative rhetoric to where they in turn wanted to um Lighten they use some cream lighten their skin, so th- thinking that they were gonna fit in, right? Now you saw that with Michael Jackson, right? Whether he had ventilago or whether he used bleaching cream, right? It still didn't work. They still called him Wacko Jacko, and treated him like a stepchild, a red head or one of that, right? So even that didn't work, right? Then you had my brown people, right? AKA Latino, AKA Hispaniolas, right? Who never been to Spain or Italy in their lives, but yet I'm Latina and I'm his Hispanic, right? But you don't want to look into your ancestors' culture, that ancient. Uh, Mexican uh, culture that had a whole different names and whole different dialects, right? But but today you have, you know, you have Mexicans just like black women dyeing their hair blonde, hate themselves so much that they want to be white. You know, change their names, try to change their accent. Some refuse to speak Spanish because they embarrassed by it, thinking, you know, they won't be able to fit in uh, or, or try to confuse people that they're white and would check white on the driver's license. And white people had to come out and say, hey, uh, Mexicans, Spanish, Latino, whatever y'all call yourselves, will y'all please stop checking white on your driver's license? You're not white, right? Then they try to get in front of black people and, you know, act like they white girls or white men. And and we're like, yeah, right. <laughs> we know who you are, right? We know who your grandparents are and your great-grandparents. So, yeah, take that. Right. Even there's some Native Americans, right? And, well, you know, the Native Americans, that's the, you know, they had the $5 Indians, they, that's a different uh, topic altogether because you did have a lot of white people claiming to be Native Americans to take advantage of some benefits, you know, and, and paid five dollars uh, to be uh, to be uh, claimed that they were uh, Native Americans on the, uh, the the census, right? Back in the day, they would pay $5 to have their status as Native American so they can get certain benefits, but they had no Native American blood. They weren't part of the indigenous. And there, so you have the term $5 Indians for that $5 that white folks paid to be put down as Native Americans on the census to reap benefits. But basically what I'm saying is White supremacy has jacked up all the different races on the planet. Got them. It's like it's like an ant bed, right? 
You know, and you got all these ants. You know how they create that little path. You know, in the in, on the ground where they've been traveling, getting food, gathering, whatever. It was that peace is gathering. They getting food, whatever. And then something comes and disturbs that pattern, that path. And then you see the ants just scrambling, you know, in different directions, bumping into each other, just straight chaotic, right? Well, that's how it was in the beginning. It was peaceful. Folks moving along, doing, you know, their routines in harmony, being joyful, right? Then white supremacy came, bam, and now everybody's confused of who they are and where they're going and what to do and who to act like and who to dress like, who to be like. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But it's sad, but it's true. Right, folks are are confused. They lost their names, lost their culture, lost their religion, lost their God, and they took on uh, white Jesus. You know, to now, yeah, you know that that became a new God. So. But you can't blame. What they say? Don't don't hate the player, hate the game. A white boy was like, well, look. If y'all dumb enough to file for it and believe it, don't blame me. You know, just just like Satan said, hey, why why you blaming me? All I did was make the call and you obeyed. You didn't have to obey. You didn't have to come. I just put the call out there. You know, a white boy was saying, hey, I just put it out there that uh, white is better. White is right. White supremacy. I didn't think people were going to actually fall in line with it, but yeah, you kind of did because at the barrel of the gun and the whip, I mean, come on, what would you expect? You know, you created a whole system and then tried to hide your hand, but now the hand is exposed and people on to you and they like enough is enough and we're not taking it anymore. You can't get mad at Maxine Waters for saying we need to get more confrontational because she's right. If you want anything done in this country, you have to be confrontational. You got to confront the issue, protest, yell, scream, do whatever you can to say, no, I'm not taking this no more, right? No, she didn't say pick up any type of weapons and get confrontational with law enforcement. She didn't say anything of the such. She just basically said, you have to get confrontational, and you do. You have to address these issues head on, straight up. Look, enough is enough. Let's deal. We, hey, that's, that's it. You know, had enough. Can't take no more. Cup run it over. So that's what that is. So, you know, shout out to Maxine Ward. You know, she put that together. So, look. Right here on Verbal Peak Radio, we basically saying, look, use your mind, use your brain, use your words as a gun and a bullet to make change, right? Use your spirit and your intellect, right? But, you know, those of you who listen to this show, this is my prediction, right? They will find Derek Showman guilty. No way he walking out of this because this is 2021. Those who listen to this show know I always said 2021 is the number five. And I said that at January the 1st. And number five represents change. Everything changing. The old way is gone. It's dead. And if you have the old mindset, you turn into a pillar of salt. Verbal pick video. We are out.